A broadcast signal intrusion is a condition that allows a hacker to temporarily take over a radio signal within a local area. It turns out you can create this condition on a Raspberry Pi and using a wire, take over any radio broadcast in the FM range. We'll show you how this works on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Most people believe what they hear on the radio, but using a Raspberry Pi and a wire, you can easily overwhelm any receiver in the area, including in cars, restaurants, or anyone else that's listening to the radio. Now, the way this works is by temporarily overwhelming the signal that the legitimate station is broadcasting, allowing us to play whatever we want over that station and make it seem like it's what they're broadcasting. Now, whether that's misleading alerts or news that's not right, or even a targeted broadcast, it all's pretty much the same when it comes to taking over devices in a nearby area. Now, before you get too excited, you should know that in most countries, this is very illegal because you're intentionally uh, interfering with a lawful broadcast. And that means that uh, without a license, you could be doing a lot of damage because this does not generate a clean broadcast. Now, what that means is that this creates a square wave, which basically outputs a lot of radio energy on bandwidths that are in wavelengths that it really shouldn't be, which could include medical devices or police frequencies or other things that you really wouldn't want to mess with. So because of this, if you want to try this out in a local area, you can even just go ahead and take the wire off of pin four, which you can count from the outside top one, two, three, four in. And just using the pen itself, it's actually enough to get a couple, maybe 12 inches of range from your receiver. So if you just put your Pi pretty close, you can avoid interfering with your neighbors or anyone else nearby and practice this without causing a big fuss. Now you'll need to make sure that you have Kali Linux running on your Raspberry Pi and pretty much any wire, including this breadboard wire will do. Although we used a piece of speaker wire and in general, a solid core wire will be better because it has less resistance than a braided wire. Once you have that, we can begin. Now, in order to follow this guide, you'll need to first follow our uh, guide to setting up a headless Raspberry Pi with Kali Linux. This will allow us to run all these commands in Debian, and although you can also run this on Raspbian, we have all this set up for Kali, so you can just go ahead and follow our last guide because it also includes two critical steps. First is the ability to log in without putting in a password, and second is automatically starting an SSH server. Now, if you follow this, uh, our old guide, then that should allow all of those things to be in place and you'll be able to start your phone's uh, hotspot and then just connect your Pi automatically. That means that from your phone or from your laptop, you'll be able to connect to your Raspberry Pi via SSH. Now, once you've completed this uh, tutorial on setting up your headless Raspberry Pi, make sure that it's been connected to the wireless network before that you want it to connect to, because once you do it the first time, it'll save it and automatically connect every time after that. And also make sure that you've put the wire that you're going to be using as an antenna on the fourth pin. Now, once all that is done, we'll need to find the Raspberry Pi on the network and we can use Nmap to do that. So we'll go ahead and type sudo nmap tac p and then 22 to search for port 22, which is SSH. I'm gonna use the network range here, which is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Once that scan returns, we should see one open SSH port, and we'll use that to log into our Raspberry Pi to control it. Once we do that, we'll be able to install uh, Pi RDS, which will, let's see, we'll be able to install Pi FM RDS, which will allow us to broadcast on any FM channel that we want um, within reason. I don't think we can go too high over, I think like 100 megahertz, something like that. But we'll take a look and see what we can do. So once this is done, we can see that there is a port uh, 22 open on the IP address 192.168.0.35. So we will type SSH root at and then the IP address that you found on your network for the Raspberry Pi, in our case 192.168.0.35. And when we press enter, it'll ask us if we want to accept the key. So we'll type yes to accept the SSH key, and then we'll need to supply the password, which in this case is the default tour, T-O-O-R. 
Once we're inside, we can see our fancy splash screen, which lets us know that we've successfully logged in, and we'll be able to go ahead and install what we need to run Pi RDS. So the first thing we'll need to do is install any prerequisite libraries. And in this case, libsendfile one dev is very important to make sure you have. So go ahead and run sudo apt get install libsendfile.dev to make sure that this works. Um, you should already have RPI mailbox uh, because that's included in Kali Linux or the Raspberry Pi. But the next step will be to copy the git clone command over to the Raspberry Pi while you are logged in via SSH. So we'll go ahead and run this. And if you hadn't already downloaded this like we have, then you would see the Pi FM RDS loading itself onto the Raspberry Pi. So we can type cd Pi FM RDS and then ls to see that there's a source file. So we'll type cd src. And after we type ls, we can see that the majority of what we're looking for is all in this folder. So great, we have connected to our Raspberry Pi, we have downloaded Pi FM RDS, and now we're ready to execute a command to use the wire that we've plugged in to create a, uh, a basically a broadcast intrusion on whatever frequency we want. So we're going to use 94.7 FM, but we need to make sure that we're actually doing this correctly. So let's use a program called GQRX to make sure that we are actually taking over the radio station that we're targeting. Now we're gonna use our RTL SDR uh, connected to GQRX to be able to monitor the frequency 94.7 and listen in on what's going on. So it looks like we have a radio station, but let's take a listen. There we go. All right, so we have some music playing on 94.7, and our goal is gonna to be to switch it to something completely different. Now, if we were doing something malicious, this could be um, maybe an emergency alert or a warning or something else, but in this case, we're just gonna to switch the music to something we like a little bit better. Now, take a look at the waveform as soon as I start this attack, and you'll see a brief burst of energy as soon as we start to take over the frequency. Now here you can see this little jump, but aside from that, it was a pretty smooth transition. And the transition back to the original uh, frequency is pretty smooth as well. So if you're looking to either switch the song at an opportune moment where maybe that jump won't be noticed, or if you want to cut in with like a broadcast or something else that might be cut into a, radio, a regular radio broadcast, you can kind of camouflage this to perform a social engineering attack where you convince the target that maybe a piece of news is happening that isn't really happening, or maybe even just take over the radio station to otherwise give some more information that might be false. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. And we can see just like that, we switch back to the original frequency and we can hear the music that's supposed to be playing. Cool, so now that we've proved that, we can see that this actually works, but there is a problem. So I'm gonna go into the terminal and take a look at the other different files we have available to play. I see there's one that's called pulses.wave and we're gonna use that one in order to identify why this could get us into some trouble if we're just doing this without being careful about the range and then other devices that could be interfered with. So now instead of a song, we're just going to start our GQRX again and then begin broadcasting a series of tones. Now this is pretty recognizable and we'll use this to be able to show off why this is not a great idea to do necessarily without a filter on the band. Now this is supposed to be broadcasting on 94.7, but in fact we might see that it's leaking into other frequencies. So let's go up to 116 and see what's happening. Now we can go through some of the frequencies here and see that the tone that we're broadcasting is actually showing up. And while we might hear a lot of static, when we find the right frequency, you'll see over here on 121.97 that we're actually broadcasting and leaking into a huge part of the spectrum. So this is actually even bigger than the part that we're looking to uh, broadcast into. So as a result, we can see that this whole area is being flooded with random radio noise. 
Now, we don't know what's going on at 121.1. It could be a medical device. It could be a federal agent's radio. But either way, you probably don't want to be bleeding all over the spectrum a bunch of radio noise that could interfere with a legitimate device that takes controls via the radio. So before you go on trying to improve the power of this sort of attack, realize that the first thing to, filter, to focus on is actually filtering it and making sure that it doesn't bleed over and start bothering other frequencies and causing other sorts of problems. The ability to use the Raspberry Pi to broadcast on arbitrary FM frequencies can be quite useful for a hacker. And at DEF CON, I even saw an awesome tool called Vapor Trail, which combined a software-defined radio and a Raspberry Pi to create a transponder that would sneak stolen information past a blue team by using maybe a local radio station's frequency rather than the Wi-Fi that they're looking for. Now, while this is super cool, you need to be very careful when boosting the power on something like this because you're basically spraying radio energy all over the spectrum and that can cause all sorts of unintentional problems with interference and get you in trouble with the FCC. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or questions about the show, shoot me a message on Twitter. We'll see you next time.